Uh, can you see me? See it now? Yok hocam görünmüyor hala. Okay. Uh, so if CPU does not have this computer exchange or system set, uh, what we are going to do? So this is the next question. Of course, uh, people uh, thought about that and someone uh, came up with the solution. And you know the guy from last hour, it is called Peterson. Do you remember Peterson from Wednesday or Friday? Okay. Burada ben sizi duyamıyor olabilirim. Bir saniye bakayım. Açık. Kimse hatırlamıyor da olabilir hocam. Okay, muhtemelen. <gülüyor> Uh, it's a long time ago. It's just how many days? Six days ago. Peterson's algorithm. Ringing some bells? Okay. Uh, so whole purpose of Peterson's algorithm is to find this uh, mutual exclusion problem a solution without having CPU help. Okay. Uh, it's, it's been a tiring week, I believe. Okay. And you are multi-threading and do many context switches and it is very costly to you. I know that from this course, the other and so on. You have my sympathy, but I have to move on. Uh, so uh, the, the thread is the same. Uh, instead of calling lock, I named it p lock and p unlock. And there are two threads. Uh, Peterson has that limitation, uh, two thread limitation, uh, but uh, there are generalized versions of that Peterson's algorithm. I'm going to show you. Peterson's algorithms means there are two threads and known in advance. And they are sharing basically, instead of only one variable, they are sharing uh, three variables. The term variable, flag variable uh, for both of them. Uh, so never mind this one for the time being. Uh, the, uh, the idea comes from this. Actually, in uh, the spin lock, we uh, test and set the same variable. But in uh, Peterson algorithm, we test, we set our interest on the topic. Then we set another variable and we check two variables. If other one, other threat is interested in, and if uh, term belongs to the other. As a result, in any order you uh, execute those operations, there is no chance that both of them are inside because setting interest with let the other one stop here and loop and giving turn to others make the actually inverse operation. However, if the other thread arrives first, it is going to set the other so I can enter. If it arrives uh, earlier, I am going to set turn to other so the other one will uh, enter. So in this way, we make sure that there is no uh, race condition in terms of uh, CPU architecture, micro instructions ordering and so on. Uh, so this is Peterson algorithms. I believe Errol already told about that, so I'm not telling you more. But what's going on? What the hell? It should have worked because we know the guy. And this algorithm is taught on all of the uh, operating system courses and so on. It is known. It is guaranteed. It should be working. But what is wrong? No, even though multiple CPU, as long as uh, the memory is intact and they are accessing shared memory, uh, it should work. Yes, someone had a clue out of order execution. Out of order execution is something fan, uh, funny introduced by. Uh, uh, the CPU uh, people uh, like in 
10 or 15 years, I'm not sure. Uh, it's, it, for sure it is in 2000s, but I cannot know, I don't know the actual uh, point in time, how it happened. The idea is this one. Uh, in Peterson algorithm, we are, uh, we are setting this variable and then observing this variable and then these two. And uh, there are actually uh, three variables, flag ID, flag other, and turn other. So turn flag zero, flag one. And they are independent. Hocam sadece sola yazdıklarınızı görüyoruz. İlginç bir şekilde sanki böyle bir transparan pencere var gibi. Yani orayı yazınca görülmüyor. <gülüyor> evet, şu an uzadı hocam. Heh, tamam, şu an... Zoom kendi penceresi diğer şey. Şu an hepsi görünüyor mesela hocam. Tamam, tamam. Bundan sonra görünür. Teşekkürler. So we have this uh, three variables and CPU guy says that if your instructions, instruction one, instruction two, instruction three, are operating on uh, different variables and independent, I can give them in different ALUs and execute them in any order. So I can have three of them in different ALUs. or even in the same ALU, I am free to order them in any way I like. Okay. So uh, the, not the compiler, but the CPU optimizes the operations on the fly when, while it's executing. As a result, what's happening actually, it is, testing flag other than setting flag ID, or it is testing turn other than setting turn other. Okay, so it first enters a while, then goes setting turn to other and so on. And this is our uh, problem in newer architecture in an older CPU, you will be happily uh, see uh, Peterson algorithms uh, working without any problem, but since our CPUs are new, we have to do that. It puts a memory fence, that means uh, complete all of the previous memory operations first, then move to the next, okay? So this one says that it is like flush all of those operations, then go with the wire. And now if you see this version, okay. Now it started working. As you can see, the Peterson algorithms, uh, Peterson algorithm is still a busy waiting algorithm. Okay, it is using CPU, so it is not a better solution to uh, spin lock. Uh, however, if there is no CPU support, you can go with that. And it has a primary, so this is the busy waiting part. And it's, it has uh, one uh, primary uh, problem. It is limited by two. So you can only have two threads or three threads, four threads. What you need to do? I'm going to give you the name and show you how it works a little bit, but I'm not going to give you full explanation because it is hard to understand. It's not that trivial. But the idea is like uh, Peterson's algorithm. So if we have n threads, we will have rooms. So assume you have, instead of a single lock, you have n minus one lock. So thread goes through all of these rooms to enter. And each thread is on waiting on a different room. And when this one terminates, the other one enters. This one terminates, other one enters. And as a result, we will handle uh, this mutual exclusion problem with uh, multiple threads. So it is like five thread version is working properly. Uh, of course, 
I need my memory fence. Okay. Uh, so you are not a disadvantage. It's still that uh, the number of threads is something like a constant, right? I mean, it can okay. change during runtime. It's a major disadvantage. It's uh, so you cannot have any uh, implementation like having arbitrary new threads are created. They terminate, new create threads. A player enters room, leaves, and so on. At least you need to have some upper bounds. So. If you set a larger upper bound like 10,000, uh, it will be ineffic ineffective. If you keep a low number, new threads cannot be created. So it is a major disadvantage. So uh, uh, I believe this is the point I would like to make the quiz. I'm going to change something and make it at the start of the session. So I will give you just three minutes. Joke, I knew do it. Quiz var mı yok mu gelirim oluyor. Gelirim mi baştan ortadan kaldıralım işte. Hocam submit etmedim ama pencere gitti. Pencere gitti. Sen bana chatten yaz Mustafa. Özel yaz tabii Ebru bana yazma. Polza tekrar tıklayınca geliyordur belki. Polza tekrar tıklayınca. Evet. Bilmiyorum ben sizin ekranınızda ne oldu mu? Süper. Şu fancy instruction'la kafanız gitmesin arkadaşlar. Fancy instruction sadece bir özel durum yani. 30 yıl önce öyle bir ihtiyaç yoktu. 20 yıl önce de yoktu. En threat olanın ismi filter algoritm. Peterson algoritm değil. Yanlış yanıt verenler düzeltemiyor mu yanlış mı? Evet, 30 saniye. Zaman geçmiş ben fark etmemişim. On, dokuz, sekiz, yedi, altı, beş, dört, üç, iki, bir. Ha, 
Okay. Uh, so I believe you are confused because of this fancy instruction, but as I said, fancy instruction is not part of Peterson's algorithm. It's just uh, some inconvenience due to too efficient CPUs. Uh, okay. I'm downloading this one. Okay, now let us move on. Ajam is a small extra detail before moving on. I mean, these algorithms that we are talking about, of course, they work for uh, arbitrary data structures, right? It's, we're just acquiring a lock. But uh, if our job is just uh, incrementing a shared variable, Mm -hmm. uh, there are like more efficient instructions, right? Like X add, I, like fetch and add at once so that uh, there's never any inconsistency. I think that would be more efficient, no? Uh, they are actually, uh, yes, uh, they are all uh, CPU uh, supported instructions. Uh, if you are uh, having this, uh, uh, fast efficient algorithm implementation uh, instead of lock excess unlock for simple increment uh, of course you had better use the cpu uh, instructions but it is a trade-off between the portability and uh, efficiency uh, but gcc provides some uh, macros or uh, built-ins uh, for that purpose, if you use GCC built-in, if GCC is ported on that architecture, even though there is no uh, uh, underlying uh, support for that uh, atomic increment, it implements that. So GCC is a good uh, position uh, if you like to do so. Okay, thanks, Ajahn. Okay, thank you. Uh, So we have uh, this about Peterson's. Now let us go to semaphore's parts. Uh, I would like to uh, emphasize one important point. Uh, so we have actually two things we have so far. We have spin locks and uh, mutexes. So they are supported by pthreads. Uh, we have uh, an important decision. Actually, this mutex implementation is costly. I can show you one. Uh, I had some problems, uh, troubles, so I didn't post yet. So this is a typical mutex. This spin lock is used for uh, protecting the mutex. So mutex needs also protection. It's a shared data structure. And it has a waiting list. So the threads will uh, wait in this wait list. I can pretty much show you Linux uh, codes and it will be similar. And this is the state, if it is in locked state or unlocked state. So what you need to do is you need to, for locking, First lock the spin, spin lock, do some operations on sleeping the weight queue and spin unlock. So it is a costly operation. For each uh, uh, lock, you need to implement that. Uh, so that means if spin lock takes, uh, for example, available, or let me write it as, uh, matrix. Assume uh, this is a matrix, and uh, if it is available, unavailable, so my uh, region is available and unavailable, so it is like a matrix. So spin like uh, will be fast. This is slower but if it is unavailable it is it uses it consumes cpu it is so it is uh, expensive and this is cheaper with one question mark 
how long is it going to be unavailed? If your critical regions are long, like seconds, this will work, okay? So it, mutex will be cheaper and Spinlux is expensive in an unavailable case. If, on the other hand, it takes a microsecond, spinning thousand times doesn't hurt anyone, okay? Instead of going into kernel, asking for uh, a spin lock, and then uh, replacing your placing your thread into a wait queue, and then going into sleep, and then waking up, it is much more costly if you are working, if you are waiting just microsecond, one microsecond or less. So it is like a, a trade-off. You need to ask this question. Uh, in which ratio I am going to go in this unavailable case? 99,000, 99.99 uh, .99 times available and then unavailable. And when it is unavailable, it will be available in a microsecond. So you can keep up with spin locks in that case. But in all other cases where your uh, critical regions are long and there is a competition, the mutexes will be much more cheaper. So this is just a remark about spin locks. Uh, so now let us start with the semaphores. I'm going to show you a couple of examples, uh, how you use it. So let us, let me show you the barrier example. It is uh, on the last slide of last week lecture uh, of Errol. I would like to show you how you uh, create an excess uh, semaphores. Uh, these are, by the way, called POSIX semaphores. They are uh, POSIX interface. POSIX makes it uh, much more portable. Uh, POSIX compliant systems will use the same semaphore. There, there is also a system five release four based, uh, I don't remember the variation uh, standard as well. Uh, if you like, you can look at the Samyet SEM. This is the other standard. Uh, the interface is similar to message queues we talk about. Uh, so uh, this is for destroying the semaphore uh, at the first because it may uh, the semaphores are persistent in the system. So you like to remove that before starting over. So it's a fresh start. And this is how you open the semaphore. Uh, you name it, and uh, after you name it, uh, so the semaphore is now available on everyone opening it. Okay, so this is going to create the semaphore, and after creation, all processes. So it is not an inter-thread thing. The semaphores, uh, by default, are uh, inter-process mechanisms. Uh, it is going to be created, and uh, this is called the bearish. Uh, and we give a initial value as the last arguments. So my semaphore, which is an integer variable, starts from zero. That means uh, I'm going to use it for blocking purposes. First time I like to down the semaphore or wait for the semaphore, it is going to block. So there are two options when you are creating a semaphore. For communication synchronization, you usually create semaphores as zero because the first one needs to block. If your semaphore means uh, it is number of resources available, for example, you set your semaphore to that value. You have three printers available, okay? You have five slots available, you set it to five. If it is a mutual exclusive, exclusive region, since no one is inside yet, you set it to one. So first one can enter, the second one cannot, because as you remember, semaphores do not go minus one. Hocam, zero olarak neden initialize ediyorduk? Ediyor muyduk ya da? Just I'm mentioning that. If you like to, uh, if you like first process to block on that, you set it to zero, okay? 
uh, your, in your scenario, first one needs to wait, okay? You make it zero. And this is the case. This is our barrier. So uh, everyone trying to enter is going to wait. Until what? Until the last one comes. So it is like a meeting. There are uh, four attendants expected to the meeting. And the meeting will start when four of them are available. Okay. Ya da dolmuş gibi düşünün. 14 kişi gelmeden kalkmayın. So everyone will start waiting. So our uh, barrier will be zero initially. Okay. This is error handling part. And then this is the mutex. This is another semaphore. This is for uh, protecting this barrier variable. In the barrier, there is a variable which counts the people. How many people are inside the waiting room? So it is uh, for that purpose. And this is the mutex. Now I create all of the uh, threads. These are names of my, of my threads. So I pass them as arguments as it is here. Uh, and now I do my barrier test. So the barrier test is this one. Uh, it is just sleeping for a random amount of time and wait for the barrier and then start and exit. So this is the critical part here, wait for the barrier. This is a standard uh, concurrency uh, pattern used in applications like uh, even in uh, high performance computing, et cetera, when you have multiple nodes, uh, NPM nodes, they, in order to start computation, they uh, expect everyone to enter. So in such cases, we use this. And this is our weight barrier. So this count, if you do not protect this count, there is a, a possibility to observe a race condition. and you increment this count incorrectly. Instead of six, it is going to get five because of that. And the barrier will not work. So you need to protect all of your shared variables. So this is an important thing. In this case, count is a shared variable and I need to protect that in order to avoid this race condition, the data race about this count. Uh, if count is number of threads, everyone is inside, then I'm going to let everyone enter. Otherwise, do not forget to release the mutex. So I allocated it here, and if I forget here, get the mutex and wait for the barrier, the next thread coming to uh, requesting to enter this mutex is going to get what? waiting and everyone will start waiting forever. We are going to talk about that uh, later. Then wait for the barrier, releasing one mutex and waiting for the other one. And then post this one. So let us play with this implementation, okay? I am commenting out this one. And I am going to, when there are end threads, I'm going to post the barrier and that's it. In this case, what will happen? The last thread entering is going to increment count and see it is number of threads. And it is going to release the barrier. Okay, everyone can enter. But since it is a semaphore, not everyone is going to enter. Posting a semaphore or signaling a semaphore or upping a semaphore, there are plenty of terminology for that. Uh, I'm not talking about this German version. Uh, you only increment it by one. That means someone else can decrement it back. Increment, decrement. So in order to make enter at enter, I need to repeat this operation n times. So one solution is this one. 
I incremented n times, n minus one times, so n minus one thread will enter it. Or this is on the slides. Everyone entering is rising it up, uh, up again so that the next one can enter. And now in this version, So as soon as everyone entered, this one is printing this, let the games begin and everyone can enter. So what happens in terms of uh, S trace? Okay. So now it will be a little harder to understand, but... So everyone uh, entering here, ready for wait very ready. And when let the games begin, this one raises, the other one resumes and 99 resumes and it is uh, posting. The next one wakes up and it is posting. Next one wakes up other posting and so on. As a result, you will observe everyone entering this barrier. So this is pretty much how uh, semaphores work. Uh, so this barrier is a, a, a synchronization uh, pattern for waiting all of the threads and let them go when uh, data is available. Uh, but of course, you cannot assume they started at the exact moment. So there, there is, of course, always uh, a delay between this post and this wait, and then this post and this one. So it is a chain of operations. And same thing for here. If I post it like that, I cannot assume that everyone starts at exactly the same moment. So it is a very hard problem starting all of the threads at once as a very uh, difficult problem. Uh, so now let us go continue with our other famous uh, implementations. Actually, these are uh, on the slides already, so I'm uh, skipping them fast. So uh, in order to implement this producer-consumer problem, we have uh, three mutexes, uh, one, uh, sorry, three semaphores. Uh, one is used for mutex purpose, and the other uh, two, full and empty, uh, has this uh, meaning. Full means uh, uh, number of full slots in my implementation. So it is initially set to zero. There is no full slot in my queue. Uh, and empty is the inverse. It represents number of empty slots in my implementation. Uh, that means the max number of consumers can pick items from the semaphore to make it zero, the next one has to wait. Uh, and full is zero, that means every, since uh, each time a producer uh, produces an item, it is going to increment that. And if a consumer is waiting, it needs to wait with this full until there is at least one element in the queue. So with this assumptions, I have this producer consumer, I have a very simple, uh, linked list implementation here uh, for in, uh, implementing the queue. That says actually my queue is unlimited since it is a linked list implementation, but forget about that. Uh, I put this full based on some assumption. And this is what producer and consumer do. So 20 times they sleep for a while and then wait for an empty slot. So this is a producer. It cannot produce until there is an empty slot. 
turn. When there is an empty slot, it is going to have this mutates at the item inserted into Q and post the mutate. So the body of the Q is protected by this region. Uh, and it is going to post as full so that at least one item, it, it is going to increment this uh, number of uh, available items. As you can see, we don't use any counter for counting number of items in the queue. So my queue implementation doesn't count. Why? Because I don't need it. The semaphores count for me. Sometimes they call this counting semaphores. If it is used uh, only for one and zero, it is called binary semaphore. Semaphore. When it is from zero to n, and can go as large as you like, uh, it is called a counting semaphore. And in this one, I'm counting. Okay. Um, counters in this case are condition variables. No, they are not condition variables. Condition variables um, is a terminology we use for monitors. Uh, semaphores and monitors are two different things. Uh, we usually do not mix them. We either use monitors or semaphores. It is not a good idea to have semaphores inside of monitors and so on. Uh, counters are semaphores in this case, if you say so, because a semaphore has a built-in uh, counter insights. So if you like to, for example, implement a semaphore on your own, we usually have a spin lock, then we have a count, and we have a wait queue. If you remember our uh, mutex implementation, this is the same thing. Each semaphore is an object like that. In order to protect the counter and the weight queue, I need to use some low order primitive like spin lock and count items and weight queue. Uh, and when you try to down a semaphore, what you need to do is you need to spin lock on this semaphore lock. And then you make this test if count is less than or equal to zero, actually equal to zero is sufficient. We need to insert at the uh, sum with queue and sleep. Else increment sum for count and then we sip and unlock. So speed unlock. Okay, so this is an implementation. And the semaphore, the object we have is counting for us thanks to this count. Okay. And initial value is important because of that reason. And on the consumer side, the consumer is waiting until there is a, a full slot in the queue and it is decrementing it. So here the weight is like, it's mine, okay? It's by decrementing it, it says that it belongs to me now. The next one will observe a counter less than that. Assume there are three items. As soon as I get some weight, now there are two items. The next one can consume, the next one can consume, but not the next one, okay? Then the same thing, do the thing and continue. And if we have double charge my code push. So there are consumers and depending on how fast they are, I believe uh, the producer is faster in this case because at the end, consumers only worked. If you make producer faster, oh, 
by playing with this. But you will see most of the time uh, the uh, consumer is uh, waiting and then okay. I the model. Consumer hocam daha çok hep bekliyor, hazır olur olmaz kapıyor gibi. Evet öyle oldu, tamam, tamam. Evet. Doğru. Ne olduğu Biraz için. Geç başlatmamız lazım ki şeyi göre. Okay, so this is the producer consumer problem, and we have the next one is reader writer problem, and the uh, same idea. Uh, could you sorry about that i need to take a phone uh, sorry about the interrupt uh, so this uh, reader writer problem you know it's a typical problem uh, writes are sh uh, exclusive, reads are shared. That means if uh, two people are reading, uh, they can read at the same time. However, if someone needs to write, they need to wait. This is a typical scenario in banking and uh, data uh, in some intensive applications. The multiple uh, readers are okay. You can check your balance in thousand threads around the country. However, if someone is, needs to uh, withdraw money, you need all others to go out because it's some uh, exclusive operation, you are changing data. Uh, sorry, I need to, I forget this names always. Okay. And Peter at library, uh, we have this uh, read lock uh right lock and unlock uh, the implementation uh, alternative to the uh, p track, track mutex uh, lock how we can do that in by using semaphores um, so i uh, have a reader writer thread which randomly reads and finishes read, start write, and finish write. And it is quite random operation. And I create like four such threads, randomly reading and writing. Uh, I create a write mutex, and uh, sorry, write semaphore, sorry about that. Uh, and the mutex uh, semaphore, I set mutex to be one and the reader writer uh, to be one because the first one can enter so it is a permissive uh, mutex uh, then the implementation is like that when i need to read i'm going to increment the reader counts uh, and if there is already a reader that means i'm in this read stage of operation i uh, uh, sorry, this if reader count is one, that means I am the first one coming. So there is no reader in the room and I am the first reader come. The, uh, there is a chance that there is a writer inside. So I need to exclude that chance by waiting for writer. If there is no writer, I am going to enter and other writers cannot enter anymore. But since this is a condition, the next reader will jump over this if. Okay, it will be the second reader. The second reader, reader is going to go and enter. Third, fourth, five, fifth, and so on. There are thousands of readers can enter. But the writer needs to wait for S write since the first reader is holding this uh right mutex the right semaphore this cannot enter by the way this implementation can be uh, done with mutexes as well so uh all, only thing i need is binary semaphore in this implementation that means you can do it 
P threadlocks or mutexes as well. Uh, what about the uh, exiting and finishing grid? I'm going to decrement the reader count. If I there are still other readers, I jump over here and go out, finish simply. But if I am the last one, I need to do this. If I am the last one, I should release this mutex I just hold, okay? So this one I hold, I should release. This doesn't have to be the same thread holding and releasing, but uh, the last one, the first one locks, the last one releases, okay? So in this way, this is going to work and that. So if this is working properly, you shouldn't see any duplication here. So for example, uh, writers are completely exclusive, but readers, there is no writer in between and writers completely exclusive. There, is up, there are up to three readers, but they don't take any uh, writer in between and so on. Okay, so this is the case. Uh, so we are out of time. If you have any question, I can answer. Uh, finish is not blocking actually, but uh, we have a short living critical regions. So these are like four instructions. And in between this uh, mutexes, there is no weight. That means uh, the finishes always uh, be short, very short. Uh, this mutex is only if uh, there to protect this read count, okay? Hocam zaten e, weight'in içinde weight çok nadir bir şey değil mi? Genelde şey, öyle bir şey yazınca direkt deadlock'a gidiyor işin sonu. <gülüyor> evet, evet, evet, deadlock. <gülüyor> weight'in içerisinde weight e, kötü. Bu bir sonraki chapter'da e, kullanacağız. Ödevde de bol bol e, başınız ağrıyacak. Maalesef yaşamadan öğrenemiyor böyle şeyler. Biz de öyle öğrenmenizi çalışıyoruz. Evet, başka soru var mı? Then uh, we can stop at this point. If you don't have any question.